So, you might be wondering why people are all up in arms about Teen Titans Go. You know, that spin-off that has very little to do with the original show, is aimed at a completely different audience than the original show, and specifically removed what made the original show special, while leaving a slot that the original show could have filled empty. I don't really know. I mean, Cartoon Network needed a pure comedy cartoon. After all, they only had Mad, Johnny Test, Adventure Time, and Regular Show, and who knows what else. They definitely needed another comedy show, instead of one that was primarily dramatic. Ben 10 Omniverse is doing the job just fine. I got a theory, though. Perhaps it's episodes like this one. It starts with Starfire waking up, wanting to celebrate Blorthog, only to find all of her friends distracted. Blorthog is apparently the Temeranian Festival of Friendship, but her desire to celebrate is stopped by her friends fighting. It eventually ends with one of Starfire's props, a necklace, being broken, causing her to shout. She tells them that friends must never act that way, or else something like this will happen. On my world, Rekmaz means the drifting, the point at which close friends begin to drift apart, and their friendship begins to die. The others reassure Starfire, telling her not to worry. They're just getting on each other's nerves, and they'll all be friends forever. Duty calls and the camera pans over Starfire's broken necklace. A time-traveling thief named Warp has traveled back 100 years to steal something called the Clock of Eternity. We have a fight scene where the Titans actually have a lot of difficulty defeating this guy. He's got a lot of high-tech gadgets and takes the clock without breaking a sweat. As he's going into a portal that will take him back to the future, Starfire tackles him, and they start traveling through time together. Before they reach their destination, Starfire takes a mechanism, and that lands her outside of the time portal. She's now sitting in the snow, in front of a forlorn titan's tower. She explores the tower as the imagery and music set the mood. She steps by that same broken necklace, worn away by the sands of time. She sees a red light and thinks that it's Cyborg. It's not. It's a bunch of robotic bugs. They just so happen to be made by Cyborg. He's in a state of disrepair, and looks a lot older. As he should, because it's been 20 years. Warp was heading to 100 years in the future, but Starfire stopped him at 20. Without Starfire, the Titans have fallen apart. Titans are history, Star. Your friends aren't friends anymore. Starfire blames Warp and wants Cyborg's help. Unfortunately, due to his batteries dying out, he can't leave the tower. The only thing he can do is tell Starfire where Raven and Beast Boy are. Not even he knows where Robin has disappeared to, though. Beast Boy is an act in some kind of zoo, where assholes throw snow at him, and he's fat and bald. After Starfire disappeared, Beast Boy continued to try to be a hero, but it didn't work out. So he got a job as an act at a zoo. Raven has it even worse. Her mind is corrupted, and she thinks that Starfire's just a hallucination. As Starfire's looking for Robin, Warp comes by because, you know, action cartoons. He wants his time travel device back, and they fight. When Starfire's defeated, she finds out that Warp has also aged. Apparently, that's what happens when someone steals his device. He then reveals that he didn't do anything to Starfire's past. This would have happened whether or not he went back at all. There's nothing wrong with your past. One cannot damage history, because history cannot be changed. I went back in time to steal this because history says it disappeared. And history says it disappeared because I went back to steal it. Past, present, future. It's all written in stone, my dear. Distraught, she gives back the time travel device. Before Warp can blast her, a new challenger appears. This guy beats Warp, until Warp decides to disappear. It's Robin, or as he's now called, Nightwing. He takes Starfire to his hideout, but she's thoroughly crushed. She thinks that changing the past is impossible. Good. If memory serves, we've done the impossible before. Nightwing held onto his Titan's transmitter just in case, and as it turns out, so did all the others. We cut to Warp, who is working on repairing his time device, until Nightwing and Starfire interrupt him. They fight, and it seems that Starfire and Robin especially have learned from their last encounter. It's still not enough, though, and Warp gets the upper hand, only to be blasted by Cyborg. Booyah. Cyborg! You are repaired! You could probably guess what happens next. The others come by to join the fight. Warp is about to escape to the future, but Robin hits his device, and that turns him into an infant. Sure, why not? Cyborg redirects the wormhole to get Starfire home, and tells her to go. Please, must this really be our future? Is there nothing I can do to change it? Nightwing hands her the clock, and that's the only answer that she needs. What happened? History said it disappeared. But history was wrong! So, she tells the Titans about the bad future, and not wanting their future to go that way, they celebrate Blorthog. 
But you know, who wants all that emotionally compelling stuff like that when we can have hilarious hijinks like this? Cartoon Network, I can clearly see that you know where it's at. But seriously, if you want to make a new comedy show, then make a new comedy show! Don't use a show that was one thing, and make it something else entirely different. That's just stupid! Hello? Five days. We're still hammering in this joke, aren't we? Five days. Uh-huh, goodbye.